Pokemon Scarlet and Violet is the most talked about Nintendo Switch game for a few days now, and not in a good way. The sheer amount of Twitter videos showing cases of extreme glitches, broken graphics, and severe performance issues have forced Nintendo to even give out refunds, a first time in Pokemon's long history on the Nintendo platform. But what happened to this game? Like seriously, what happened to this game? Why is this game so bad on a technical level? And are there any positives to balance out all of this negativity that's surrounding Pokemon Scarlet and Violet? Let's take a deep dive look into my Pokemon Scarlet review. Despite all the glitches and bugs, Pokemon Scarlet is a fun Pokemon game, and the first Pokemon game to be truly open world. Very few loading screens block the player from seamless traversal, and this is why I love this game so much. This new freedom paired with the three overlapping stories that you can progress in any order feels like a step forward in the franchise and a step forward in the right direction the seamless environments that go around this pokemon universe is seamlessly woven into the classic pokemon battles of actually old but instead of pokemon battles taking place in its own little bubble its own little screen it's seamlessly in the environment to really showcase this open world you could freely move around the map while your pokemon's battle and there's a lush new amount of changes and features that really make this open world game pop and it's such a shame and it's such a shame that the technical issues really overshadow all of the great new innovations this Pokemon game has. Fast travel was added into this game to really make the open world easier to, to actually traverse. But I found myself just, just uh, rolling around riding my Pokemon anyway and really only using the fast travel when I'm like super far from like where I wanted to go. But once again, it's it's a shame because there is a lot to love about this game, but the technical issues, once again, overshadow the positive of what Game Freak tried to do with this, with this uh, franchise. Now, the visual problems and glitches are well documented. You can literally go on Twitter right now and just see the endless videos of the extreme graphical glitches this game has. Some of it's are very funny, but overall, it's just very sad. Honestly, it's very sad. And it's a shame, too, because this game is such a mismatch in graphical fidelity. It reminds me of one of those very poorly ported quote unquote remasters where basically just the HD quote unquote HD is not really HD. I mean, the 3D models get a bump up in resolution, but none of the 2D models, uh, 2D artwork and sprites get, get actually upscaled and they use a bilinear filtering to try to mask it. This is what Pokemon Scarlet feels like. In dock mode, the game is running at 1080p, and while the character models, the Pokemon models, and the textures for actually both the characters and the Pokemons are really high quality and probably the best the franchise has ever looked, everything else just feels flat. The world, the environment, doesn't fare as well. They are extremely, I would call, ultra low quality. And it really is a mismatch. When you put the 3D model in front of these ultra low environmental textures, it really does look like one of those poor HD remaster ports. And it looks like a, a bilinear filtering, you know, blurring out the ultra low resolution backgrounds. And this is everywhere. This is everywhere. The entire game is filled like this. While you are traversing, you and your Pokemon look great. When you, when you enter a battle, the Pokemons look great. But when you're traversing 
the world just looks extremely flat and it's a real shame because you you could tell that game freak focus a lot on making sure that your character model as well as the pokemon look the best that it can be it's just a shame that the rest of the world didn't fare well and combine that with the extreme pop-ins that happen in this game and with no type of way to hide the pop-ins there is nothing Game Freak did to to uh, minimize and hide the poppins, either through a fog or something like that, similar to what Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild did, as well as some other games, kind of like Wolfenstein. But they don't, and because of that, poppins are extremely distracting with people and environments just appearing out of nowhere. I mean, you're riding along on your Pokemon and you accidentally hit an NPC because they weren't there a second ago and then they are and you bump into them and it's it's really distracting and jawing and it's a real shame too because once again, this game is extremely fun. It It, it is extremely fun, but when you start adding all these technical problems, the game doesn't become fun no more. And you would think all of this negativity with the visuals at least will be counterbalanced by a decent performing game, but Pokemon Scarlet and Violet fail in that aspect as well. While Pokemon battles are stable and solid 30 frames per second, the traversal of the world sadly doesn't, and you're rarely getting a stable 30 FPS. Uh, the most common frame rate is uh, sporadic 20s, 20 to actually 30 FPS, averaging out to around 25 frames per second in a lot of areas. Some areas even go lower to the teens, to the 15s, to 18s frames per second, but it's seriously bad. It is seriously bad. I mean, you're getting lots of stutterings, lots of slowdowns, and the game just, once again, doesn't feel polished. It doesn't feel like it was ready to be released at all. But what are causing these performance issues? Well, one Reddit user speculated that this was due to a memory leak, and it got me curious because memory leakage is a common emulator problem and it's a common problem amongst many games. So it really got me thinking, um, is memory leakage one of the problems uh, that's causing a lot of these performance issues and uh, performance to get progressively worse and worse the longer you actually play the game to the point where either the game crashes or you're forced to just completely restart the the actually game close it and restart it again for, from your switch with the extreme of turning off your switch entirely uh i did a small little test running around the entry level so starting from the lighthouse and running to uh your first major city i just ran up and there back and forth for a good like five to ten minutes and uh yeah from the start of my test, RAM usage was around 2.7 gigabytes. And let's fast forward to about five minutes after my first lap. So after my first lap around the lighthouse, going to the lighthouse, going to the entrance of your first major city, th this is only five minutes. And you see from 2.7, my RAM usage is now around 2.9 gigabytes now the switch only has four gigabytes of ram that's it with around three gigabytes available for for the game you could clearly see this on the actual overlay yourself so the memory leakage actually seems to be a real possibility and maybe one of the causes for the performance issue one of many is it seems because the causes could be a lot of things uh cpu bottleneck gpu bottleneck memory leakage memory bandwidth issues you take your pick it's one of those issues and it's sad to see pokemon and scarlet and violet in this poor poor state because i really enjoyed this game 
I really enjoyed this game a lot. I love the open world aspects. I love the openness of you could tackle the story mode in any way, shape, or form. You could either battle the Titans, you could uh, take on the Pokemon League in any order. Uh, you could take on the uh, Team Star bases in any order. So there's a lot to love about this game. But once again, just the issues just overshadow it. And it's, it's really a shame. And Game Freak should be held accountable. And they should be held to a higher standard. They really should. Once again, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. If you like my content and reviews, please leave a like, comment below, share this video with your friends, and finally subscribe. This is Matthew Warbay, AKA MWarbay001 for all you Instagram followers and for all you PC gamers. I'm CoolHardy100 on Steam, you can find me there, and I'm probably gonna play God of War 2018. So once again, guys, have an awesome day and have an awesome Thanksgiving.